Hello friends and welcome to today's lesson. Today we will be learning about growing in glory, spiritual growth. But before we do that, let's go praise God together. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. I will, I will not die, the resurrection of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He is overcome, yes, He is overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, You are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children, and their children. May His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, and your coming, and your going, and your weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you, 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 He is for you. Amen. 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 Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome.
welcome welcome back i hope you i hope you've had an amazing week i hope your summer is going great are you still wearing your mask are you still washing your hands when last did you talk to your friends from school let me know in the comment section type it up on your ipad here's how my week's going and this is how i feel i want you to describe how you feel for me in two words just two words my word is gonna be i feel very blessed <laughs> so maybe that's a lot more words we're very and blessed so put yours in the comment section today anyways we've had an awesome praise and worship session we're just gonna go straight into our lesson which is growing in glory and we're gonna be talking about spiritual growth now this is about to be a very interesting session i want you to stay tuned because we're gonna have some videos to watch get ready to take notes and pay attention because you might see something here that's gonna make your week a lot more better this week okay so just trust me and stick with me our memory verse for today is from matthew 5 verse 6 and it says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake for they shall be satisfied again Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness sake, for they shall be satisfied. One more time, Matthew 5 verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for they shall be satisfied. Awesome. If you want to prove to me that you really did pay attention and you really did listen to the memory verse, put in the comment section for me again. Just put Matthew 5 or 6 and type up the memory verse. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Now I know you're paying attention. Okay. So we're going to get right into today's lesson and into the main core of it. And we're talking about spiritual growth. Now, what is spiritual growth to you? What do you think it is? Again, we're going to have a conversation. I want to know what you're thinking and put what you think in the comment section. Let's have a conversation with ourselves and with your friends, okay? What is spiritual growth to you? Awesome. Thank you for your feedback and thank you for letting me know what you think spiritual growth is. To me, spiritual growth is just developing your relationship with God. It's that simple. Learning about God more, understanding who God is more, and wanting to live a life like Jesus even more. That is simply what spiritual growth is. Spiritual growth essentially means that you are getting to a place in which you become less like a worldly person and more like Jesus. So you sin less, you lie less, you get your friends upset less, you love more, and you become a better Christian. Now we all know that we're not perfect. And so when we give our life to Christ, when we become Christians, we're imperfect people who serve a perfect God, right? I think we all agree with that. Let me know if you agree. However, Jesus called us to be perfect people. And so if we want to be perfect people, what do we have to do? We have to get to know the perfect God. And that is what spiritual growth is. You need to put yourself in a position where you're learning about God. And so the more you learn about them, the more you become like them. Let me give you an example. When you were born, do you think you and your mom were really similar? Let me know. Do you think you were similar? I mean, you're probably a crying baby who cried all the time and all they wanted to do was eat and sleep and eat and sleep. But today, there are things you and your mom or you and your dad can laugh about and you agree on. Maybe you agree and you have a favorite cartoon that you share, or you have a favorite movie that you love to watch together, or you have a favorite place that you like to go to together. Whatever, let me know something that you share with your parents that you completely enjoy, something you and your parents are very similar in the way you like or enjoy this thing. So back to my example, right? So you were born as a baby, you weren't really that much like your parents, you maybe looked like them a tiny bit, but now you look like them a whole lot more. And a huge part of this is because of the fact that the more you spend time with someone, the more you get to know someone, the more you become like them. And that's exactly what spiritual growth is. The more you spend time with God, the more you worship God, the more you read about God, the more you talk to God, the more you become like him because you start to think alike, you start to act alike, and now you can truly see that you're becoming a better person for the good of 
your Christian faith and your salvation is becoming more secure. And that's basically what it is. And I know it gets hard sometimes. Sometimes we forget to pray. Sometimes we forget to read our Bibles. But the important thing is not how long you forgot to do this for. It's what happens when you remember. Think about that again. I'm going to say it one more time. The most important thing is not how long you did not read your Bible for. It's not how long you didn't pray for. But it is how long you waited to do it after you remembered. And let me tell you why. So this is one of my favorite stories that I've heard about. And this is how it goes. So there's a woman who used to teach at a school. And she had a lot of students in her class. But every day she came to school, the first person to say hi to her at the entrance was this girl called Libby. Okay, we're going to call her girl Libby. Okay, so Libby will say hi to Miss A every single day when she gets to class. Libby would carry Miss A's back to the table. Libby will bring Miss A an apple every day. Libby will ask Miss A how her weekend went. Libby would always want to hang out with Miss A during recess. Libby would always want to sit with Miss A during lunch. Libby would even always tell her friends to behave and not make a lot of noise in class. Why? Because she's so in love with Miss A. She loves Miss A so much. And Miss A grew very fond of Libby. She was the first person she expected to see when she came to class. She was the last person she said goodbye to when she was leaving the next morning. Libby and Miss A were really close. And Miss A loved Libby so much, not because she was smart. No, there were times when Libby got three out of 10 on her quiz. Not because Libby didn't make mistakes. Libby most times would even do something wrong, might lie, might come late to school. But no matter how many times Libby made a mistake, the next day, she's showing up with a big bright smile to talk to Miss A. And that's how our relationship with God should be. Libby, through her actions, stole the heart of Miss A and had it in her hands. Miss A could not go a day without thinking about Libby, without wanting to be there for Libby, without making sure that Libby was having the best experience possible. And that is how our relationship with God should be. It doesn't matter how many times we've messed up. It doesn't matter if we're in the right or in the wrong. All that matters is that we're constantly coming back to God because we care. When you get to that point where you say, even my mistakes are not enough to keep me from the presence of God, that is when you are growing spiritually. With that in mind, let's listen to this video. Is being a Christian just about going to church and trying to be a good person? No way! God has a special mission for every Christian, even if you're just a kid. We've already learned two truths in our foundation series. Here's the third one. Foundations truth number three. We grow by helping others. It's easy for kids to think that the whole world revolves around them. You mean it doesn't? Parents, teachers, principals, bus drivers. Boat captains. Yeah, everyone is there to help kids. But do you know what happens when you grow up? You have to get married. Yuck! No, not that. When you grow up, you're the one helping others. And that's how God wants it to be for Christians. If we really want to grow up, we need to help others. Here's what the Bible says. For the whole lot, it can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, how do you do it? There are three ways. Number one, we grow by serving people. If you want to grow up to become the most mature Christian ever, you have to learn to serve people around you. Do you know who's famous for that in the Bible? Uh, Jehoshaphat? No, silly, Jesus. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And then he told them, and since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. In Jesus' day, only the lowest servants would do the dirty work of washing people's feet. Ew! Gross! But when Jesus did it for his disciples, he was sending them an important message. Be a servant. Who are some people that you can serve this week? My mom, my dad, my brother, my chicken. All right, here's the second way we can grow. We grow by giving money. 
Did you know that at church you can give money in the offering? Why would a kid do that? Because that money helps more people meet Jesus. And even kids can be generous with their money, even if they don't have a lot. I have a dollar. Every little bit counts. And there's one more thing you need to know if you want to grow. The greatest way to grow is by sharing our faith with others. Have you ever told another kid what Jesus means to you? I've seen him do it in a movie before. At first it seems hard to do, but it's really pretty easy. Try and invite them to church or show them one of your favorite kids' church videos. Maybe they want to have a relationship with God too. And maybe they've noticed that you're a different kind of kid and want what you have. When you share your faith, that's when you'll really start growing. And that is exactly what God wants. Memory verse. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Do you know what Jesus' disciples did after he told them to go make disciples? They went! Yeah, they started sharing their faith and lots of people became Christians. You're one of them, right? So now you can go and grow. Do you know how? By serving, giving, and sharing our faith. Welcome back, friends. That was an amazing video. I learned so much from that. So I hope you took something out of this lesson. I hope you have something you can implement in your day. And I just want to challenge you today for this week. All I want you to do is make a note of every time you forgot to pray, every time you forgot to read the Bible, and tell me yourself and see how long it took you to go back to God, okay? And I want you to just have it at the back of your mind that Jesus loves you more than you can ever understand or imagine. And because of how deep that love runs, you can never make a mistake that takes you too far away from him. There's no such thing as being too far away from God. And the only time there's space between us and God is when we pull away from God. God never pulls away from us. That being said, let's say a quick word of prayer. God, we pray you help us to trust in you, to obey your word, and to learn more about you and become more in love with you and really have you radiate through our lives every single day. We love you. We appreciate you. And we just hope you continue to remind us to spend time with you. Remind us that you're there with us. And help us to help our friends come in contact with you as well. Continue to keep us safe, Lord. And help us to have more and more things to celebrate with each other. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, friends. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your summer. Bye. Hi, children. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And um, you remember what the memory verse is? Now we know that we have to grow spiritually. So let's go out there and grow spiritually. <laughs>